Andrew Yang, of course, you remember Mr. Yang, the uh, forward party co-chair, the former Democratic presidential candidate. Uh, much, much more. Andrew, always great having you. Um, you're an independent now, uh, but when you look at the Democrats gathering and gathering, um, you know, very happily around Kamala Harris, what do you think? Uh, it, it's been fascinating to see everyone from Bernie Sanders to J.B. Pritzker on stage. I mean, that, that's kind of the economic bookend, Neil, <laughs> and, yes, and we're, we're here talking about uh, yeah, uh, on uh, Fox Business. Uh, so the, the question in my mind is which party is going to be able to make a better case that they're going to address folks' day-to-day -day issues uh, in terms of affordability, livability, food, fuel, uh, the cost of drugs. Uh, I think whichever party makes that case more convincingly is going to win. How do you think they handled the whole Joe Biden thing? Um, I've always said it, it wasn't so much that he, you know, he jumped, he was pushed. And, and, and obviously a lot of the pow powers that be, including Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, others, you know, succeeded at pushing him off the stage. And then there was that opening night where, uh, for a variety of reasons, some most sinisterly expect deliberate, his, his remarks were pushed off until at least on the East Coast, well after 11 p.m. What, what do you make of it all? I was on Team Swap Joe out, Neil, but I want people to reflect on how fascinating it is that a sitting president shows up to the convention day one and then gets on a plane and goes on vacation. <laughs> 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 you know, the days It is two, weird. Three, yeah, you're right. Even it's like, weird, but it, it says a lot. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to take sides on this, but I've talked to many elderly voters in particular, and so I don't like the way that went down. I feel bad for Joe. Uh, you know, I don't think they're judging Kamala Harris one way or the other, but the way this was done. Now, it is what it is. The party seems quite united. Um, boy, that maybe by these polls. But it, it, the whole thing is a little unusual, to put it mildly, right? You know what it reminds me of, Neil? I was the CEO of a company, uh, and then uh, we had a new CEO. And you know who the old CEO does not uh, want to kind of Bigfoot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, a shadow on. So if, if Joe's there, then he naturally ends up drawing a lot of uh, the emotion and no, energy. No, I, I get that. Uh, and but so there I has to him, be a better way of handling you know, it. That's all I'm saying. No, but it, it is a fascinating dynamic, though, uh, Neil, because we, we've all seen, I think, different versions of this in, in different places. Uh, and, and I thought it was very impressive that the Bidens came, essentially took a victory lap, uh, and then uh, took off and said, really, in the most visceral way, visceral way possible, uh, this is going to be Kamala's party now. Um, you know, knowing your independence, uh, all that, and I'm sure you're aware of this news on Robert F. Kennedy Jr., that uh, he might quit the race, at least according to his running mate, um, would ostensibly back Donald Trump. Uh, now, he doesn't poll well nationally, but he does poll quite well in some, in, in some battleground states, as you did when you were running, as you did even uh, considering a, a run for mayor. And I'm I, I just wondering what kind of impact that would have. In other words, if all of his votes in states that are still tight as a tick where he garners, I think he garners 4% in Michigan, he gets about 4.5% in Pennsylvania. That, that could be a big impact, couldn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think RFK's uh, base is one of the major variables left in this race uh, because the cake is increasingly baked. Uh, you know, Trump voters are going to be there for him. Uh, Kamala's voters are, are now consolidating quick. Um, but four or five percent is going to be well over the margin of victory in Michigan, Nevada, Arizona. I mean, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin are probably going to be within one percent. Um, so if RFK's, let's call it four or five percent, heads in earnest in one direction, that's probably the race. Um, the economy is always the backdrop to this. You're aware of this. This job revision number to the tune of more than 800,000 over the last year, at least the year ending in March of this year. Uh, but, but still robust job growth. I don't want to mischaracterize it, just not as robust as earlier thought. So rather than the 2.9 million uh, new jobs that the administration was crowing about, more like 2.1 million. Now, Republicans, is, is not surprisingly, Andrew, are, are seizing on this as proof that. We're going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, Democrats are saying, well, it's still a very nice handbasket and we're still doing okay. How do you think this all works out, if it does at all? 
to me, Neil, the question is when. Uh, I believe that there is going to be a shoe that drops. Uh, there's a very, very big difference between that shoe dropping in October or December. <laughs> in good, terms point, of, good point. Good uh, point. The, the the presidential race. Uh, but I, I'm someone who believes that uh, there's a certain law of gravity or physics uh, to a, a lot of businesses. I do have friends um, who have been tightening their belts uh, or been stealthily laid off. Um, and so I, I think there is some underlying weakness in the economy. Really, the question is when that comes to the surface, uh, whether it's this fall uh, or next year. All right. Andrew, thank you very much. We had some incredible races, history-making races, because you spoke to people, all people, uh, without choosing one side or the other. So that hope springs eternal. Good seeing you again, my friend.